Hello, and welcome to My Size Science at Home, where we'll be doing the elephant toothpaste demonstration. My name is Anne. I'm an explainer here at NYSA, and welcome. Hello, everyone. My name is Ian, and welcome to Nice Size Science at Home, where today's demonstration will be our elephant toothpaste experiment. Now, before we begin, I'd like you all to think back to when you were a kid and probably fell and scraped your knee. Your grown-up would then rush over to you with a strange brown bottle full of clear liquid that would help patch up your cut. That liquid is known as hydrogen peroxide, and it's normally used as a disinfectant for cuts and scrapes. Now, hydrogen peroxide is very similar to water, as the chemical composition for hydrogen, for hydrogen peroxide is H2O2, whereas water is H2O. Exactly. And when hydrogen peroxide begins to break down naturally, the chemical bonds between the molecules weaken and form oxygen and water molecules. This process can happen very slowly. So for today's purposes, we will be using a special catalyst to help us out. A catalyst is a substance that quickens and increases the rate of a chemical reaction. And what's our catalyst today, Ian? Well, Anne, for today's experiment, we will be using some yeast here. Now, yeast contains a very special chemical known as a catalase, which lets it act as a catalyst to speed up the breakdown of hydrogen peroxide. When you mix these two together, the hydrogen peroxide will begin to break down and start converting into water and oxygen bubbles that will pop up and boil out of our liquid. But what would happen if we could cause this reaction, but somehow trap our oxygen bubble, bubbles so that way they wouldn't leave our liquid? To do that, we're going to need a few materials. Yeah. In order to do this experiment, we're going to need empty plastic bottles or a container, warm water, make sure that it's not too hot so we don't kill our yeast, liquid dish soap, um, some measuring cups and some measuring spoons as well, safety goggles if you have them at your disposal, a large tube or tray just to make sure that um, we're catching all the foam, some napkins or dishcloths to clean up, and some liquid food coloring if you have some. And also, let's not forget our special catalyst today, yeast, which you can find some at the baking section of your grocery store. So make sure that you gather all of your materials in one place that's large enough to complete this experiment with ease. And for your safety, it's recommended that you put safety goggles, but if you don't have any, just make sure that you take a step back when the reaction happens because hydrogen peroxide can be very irritating to your eyes. Also, make sure to place your plastic bottle or um, container on a tray or a tub just to make cleanup a lot quicker and easier. Lastly, we know that this um, activity may resemble toothpaste, but it is not meant to be used as such, all right? So shall we begin, Ian? All righty, everyone. With safety precautions out of the way, let's get this show on the road. So I'll place my goggles on like this, and let's grab our first part of the experiment which will be our hydrogen peroxide. So I'm going to grab our measuring tools and we're going to take half a cup of hydrogen peroxide and pour it into our beaker here. So we're gonna pour it like so. Make sure we measure out just enough so that we get a good reaction. All right, I've got my half a cup. I'm going to pour it into our beaker like so. All right. Now that that's done, we're going to grab our next ingredient, which is our dish soap. So you can be a little generous with this. So all you have to do is take your di some dish soap and give a few good squirts on the inside. I'm going to do one, two, and three. Three. Once you place your dish soap inside, you want to sort of swirl it around so all the contents are nice and mixed up. Here we go. Swirly, swirly, swirl. All right. 
So now that these are all put together, we get to the fun part of the experiment. We're gonna add some color. So, gonna need some suggestions from our audience. What colors would you like to see today, hmm? Any colors, any colors? Oh, hearing something. I'm hearing a nice suggestion of possibly blue. And luckily I've got some sky blue here that we can work with. So, I'm gonna unscrew here and we're gonna add some blue to our mixture. So I'm gonna give it a few good squirts. So we're gonna go one, two, and three. And then we're gonna swirl it around so everything is nice and mixed up. Swirly, swirly, swirl. Nice blue liquid we've got here. Well, you can try one solid color like Ian, or you can get creative with multiple colors of your choosing. So I've decided to do some stripes with green and red. And what I'm gonna do is just take some and pour it alongside of my container. Make sure that you have enough just to make sure that the color is showing up. So I'm gonna do two stripes of red right here. And I'm going to take my green and do two stripes of green as well and squeezing out a good amount of color so that it shows up in my solution. And also make sure that you're not mixing the colors so that the stripes can show up when the reaction happens. So after we've chosen our colors, what should we do next? So now that we've added colors to our solution, we then have to put in the most important ingredient of all, our yeast. So to do that, we're going to take a separate container that we're going to mix our ye yeast in. So I'm gonna place this down like so, and I'm gonna grab our yeast over here. Now, we're gonna need about three tablespoons of yeast. So I'm gonna put them in one at a time. So we're gonna scoop up some yeast Get a nice good amount. We're gonna put it in. So that's one. I'm gonna grab another one. Two. And the last one. And three. So now we've got three whole tablespoons of yeast. The next step is getting some water. So in this case, we are going to take our water and we're going to put in one cup of water and add it to our yeast. So we're gonna pour this in. Uh-oh, that's okay. It's just some water, so spills can happen. So we're just gonna pour this, keep it going, keep it going, keep it together, and just like that. Now to avoid any further spilling, we luckily have a funnel over here. So we're gonna try and pour into our funnel just so we don't spill any more water. So now once our water and our yeast is together, we're going to take our stirrer and mix it all together. So you wanna stir it up so that way the yeast and water basically mix into one and it all becomes this like brownish soupy liquid. At first when you're stirring, you might think that it kind of feels like peanut butter because it's sort of like chunky in certain spots. But you want to keep stirring until it almost becomes one solid liquid. Which is kind of weird to say, but it is sort of like a mushy version of like water and peanut butter mixed together. So. Once you get a few good stirs in, and you can kind of see that all of it moves in one solid state, we're then going to add our yeast mixture to our hydrogen peroxide. Now, this part is gonna be important. You wanna make sure to move anything you deem essential a little bit away from your solution here, as our reaction gets a little bit intense. So I'm gonna move some stuff out of the way, just in case. Give a few more good stirs to our solution here. Make sure it's all one big liquid. 
All right, stirring, 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 stirring. Boil, boil, tumble in trouble. Here we go. Let's make our explosion rumble. All right, so we're gonna add our, th our solutions together. On the count of three. One, two, three, go! Whoa! Look at that! It's just bubbling and bubbling out. Wow. It just keeps going and going and going. If you actually look closely, you can actually see some steam coming off of it. Look at it go. Just oozing out everywhere. Pretty intense, huh? And depending on the colors you chose, you should have a nice pattern going on as it's just spreading out from our beaker. Whoa. All righty. So I think our reaction's starting to calm down a little bit. So what do you guys think happened here? Any ideas for why our solution bubbled up like this? What do you think out there? Hmm, you think because the yeast was reacting with the other stuff? That's actually right on, right on the nail there. But I think Anne can explain a little bit better on what exactly happened here. Anne, take it away. Yeah, so, well, as you guys mentioned, the yeast was reacting um, with what we added in. And that was a very exciting, cool experiment, right? So from the observations we've gathered, we can say that when we added in the dish soap, we created an extra layer of surface tension. Those extra layers cause our liquid to turn into foam as the oxygen bubbles are formed and aren't able to fully escape. We also noticed that there was some steam coming off of our mixture, um, which can be classified as an exothermic reaction. In other words, the release of heat during a chemical reaction. The chemical reaction continues as long as there's enough yeast and hydrogen peroxide left. Once one runs out, the reaction comes to a stop. And if you want to put a fun twist to this experiment, you can try with different shaped containers. Um, and what kind of containers would you want to try next? Or if you want to really spice up your reaction, maybe you could try using a different type of catalyst. For this experiment, we had used yeast to speed up our reaction. But what do you think would happen if we used a catalyst with maybe a little bit more kick to it. I'll leave that for you guys to find out a little bit later. But for now, we're gonna move on to the next part of our demonstration, which is led by one of our lovely explainers, Anisha. Anisha, take it away. Hi guys, welcome to the New York Hall of Science. My name's Anisha and I'm an explainer here. And today I'm gonna to be presenting for you our elephant toothpaste demonstration, okay? But how are you guys doing today? Great! Yeah, oh, you guys, I know you guys can do so much better. How are you guys doing today? Great! Yes, okay, that's perfect. So in light of Black History Month, we're gonna be recognizing a couple different black scientists. And the first scientist that we're gonna be recognizing is gonna be Marie M. Daly. And she's actually a biochemist that was born right here in Queens. And she got her master's of science at Queens College, and I attend Queens College too, so I found that so, so cool. The work that she did helped to clarify how the human body works in regards to the way food and diet can affect the heart. And that helped, that helped to give the world a better insight into the causes of heart attacks. So for our activities today, we're gonna take a step away from biochemistry and just be dealing a little bit more with chemistry, specifically phase changes. So a phase change happens when we have a substance go from one phase to another. And to do this, we're gonna be actually using temperature. So we're gonna be using a really, really cool liquid. And this liquid is called liquid nitrogen. And what's really cool about liquid nitrogen is that it boils at a super, super cool temperature. So I'm gonna pour out our liquid nitrogen just a little so you guys could see. 
but can anyone tell me what temperature they think liquid nitrogen boils at? Yeah. So it's actually like super, super cold. So we have to think about a really cold temperature. So does anyone have an idea what temperature that could be? Yeah. 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 Yep. Just like this, right? Okay, so I'm going to tell you, it's actually a really cold temperature, and that is negative 320 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's actually super, super cold. So I have a couple of items right here, and I want us to focus on this item right here. So does, do any of you recognize what this item is? Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, it's a balloon. And does anyone know what our balloon is filled of? All the way in the back, yeah. Yeah, it's filled with air. And that air is made up of three different gases, okay? So, okay, so there's helium, but it's like a really, really small concentration. Can anyone else guess what the gases might be? Yeah. Say that one more time. Oh, so not quite. We're thinking like a specific gas. So like, does anyone know the gas that we actually breathe in? Yeah. Yeah, so we breathe in oxygen. What about the, the gas that we breathe? Does anyone know that? Oh, yep. So it's carbon dioxide. And that last one is actually going to be nitrogen. So now just by looking at our balloon, how many balloons do you think we could fit into this pot right here? Yeah. We could fit one? Okay, let's see. Yeah. No brainer, right? We could only fit one balloon. It's not a really big pot. But what we're going to try to do is we're actually going to try fitting multiple balloons in our pot. So what we're going to do is we're going to go back to using our really cool liquid. Does anyone remember the name of this liquid? Does anyone? Say that again. Nitrogen. Yeah, liquid nitrogen. So we're going to pour out some more into our pot. This looks really, really cool. It does. It, it's super, super cool. That's why I have to wear these gloves. So now I'm going to start putting our balloon into our pot. And I want you guys to tell me, what do you see happening? Yeah. Yeah, so it looks like our balloon is getting like super small. What about in the back? Yeah. Yep. Oh, so, oh, you think it's um, like getting deflated? That's a really good guess. We're going to actually get to talk about that a little bit more. So now I'm already starting to add our second balloon into our pot. And we said before that we could only fit one. So we see that our liquid nitrogen was able to be a really great help. So let's talk about why that happened. So we just put our balloons into like a really, really cold environment. So all those atoms and molecules that are inside, they're getting super, super close together. So now that we know why it got really close together, what do you think would happen if we take our balloon out of our pot? Yeah. You think it's gonna refill? What about in the back? Yeah. It's gonna expand, okay? Let's take out our balloon and let's see what happens. Okay, so as that's starting to happen, what do you guys notice happening to our, our balloon? Yeah. Yeah, so we see it going back to its original state. Yeah, what about you? you yep, yep, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, that was a really great answer. So let's talk about why our balloon was able to go back to its original state. So before we had it in a super cold environment, but now we were able to put it in a really warm envir environment, which is just like our room temperature air, and that's about 70 degrees Fahrenheit. So those atoms and molecules were starting to move further apart again. So now I'm actually gonna come to you guys with our clear balloon, and we're gonna see what we notice about that balloon. Okay, so I'm gonna take a step closer. You guys notice anything in our balloon? Yeah, what do you see? So we see like a liquid, right? 
So this fluid is actually our oxygen and our car and our nitrogen turning into a liquid. So we we knew that inside of our balloon was a gas. But because of that really cold environment, it was able to turn into a liquid. And there's also like really tiny specks of crystals, which is going to be our nitrogen, our carbon dioxide that turned into a solid. So just now we were able to talk about three different phases of matter. So I said all three of them. Do you guys remember which one those were? So for instance, what about water? What phase of matter is water in? Yeah. So we have a liquid, that's one, yeah. Solid. Solid, and what's that last one, yeah. Yep, a little bit louder, sorry. Okay, let me get closer, because I really want to hear your answer. Yeah. Yeah, oh yeah, exactly, so a gas. So we had a liquid, a solid, and a gas. And by using this temperature, we were able to see our phase change happen. Okay. So while I clear some of these materials out of the way, I want to talk about another scientist. And this scientist's name is actually Percy Julian. And Percy Julian was born in the late 1800s. And although he was not allowed to attend high school, he was still able to earn his PhD. So he worked with soybeans in order to advance the development of medication, right? And he did this by using a process called uh, a balloon, those happens all the time. So he did this using a process called chemical synthesis, which is more commonly known as an artificial chemical reaction. So although he was faced with many challenges due to being African American, he was still able to make a name for himself and be remembered as one of the most influential scientists of American history. So following in Julian's footsteps, what we're gonna do is we're gonna make our own artificial chemical reaction. And what a chemical reaction is, is when a substance is able to go from one to another. And we're gonna do this by using something called hydrogen peroxide. So for those of you who did our at-home activity, you guys have already learned about this material. Cause, so can anyone in our audience tell us what hydrogen peroxide is or is used for? Yeah. Oh, so not quite, not with oil. Does anyone have an idea? Yeah, all the way in the back. Oh yeah, yeah, so for, for cuts, right? So hydrogen peroxide is commonly used to clean cuts and wounds. And what makes hydrogen peroxide so special is that over time, it turns into water and oxygen. But this takes a super long time to happen. But I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I'm really impatient and I don't wanna wait that long. So what we're gonna use is that chemical reaction that we talked about earlier. So let's see. In this flask, we have our hydrogen peroxide. And now, can anyone tell me what phase of matter our hydrogen peroxide is? Yeah. Yeah, so it's the liquid. So now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add some liquid dish soap. And this is just so that we could see the effect of our reaction even clearer. And I wanna get a good amount. So I'm gonna really use my strength to pour some out. Now what else I'm gonna be adding is some liquid food coloring. So here I have some red, and I'm gonna add this. Whoa, that's cool. And I'm also gonna add just a touch of green. Okay, so our next substance is actually potassium iodide. So, for those, so this is gonna serve as our catalyst. And for those of you who did the at-home activity with Anne and Ian, you actually used yeast as your catalyst. So when we combine our mixture together, we're gonna to see a really cool reaction, okay? So I wanna do a countdown from five, okay? And let's all count down together, okay? Five, four, three, two, one, pour, and let's see what happens, guys. And, whoa, let's keep it going. 
Whoa. Yeah, so we see, a, whoa, that's actually a lot of foam. That's really cool. So what did you guys see happen? Yeah, all the way in the back. Yep. Yeah, exactly. So we saw foam. Did anyone notice anything else? Yeah. Yeah, all the way in the back. Yeah, so we saw a lot of that red, and that was from our food coloring. Anyone else? Did you have something to say? Yeah. What is the touch? Oh, so it's like, it's a really high concentration. That's why I wore these gloves. We don't want to actually touch it, because it, it just wouldn't be safe for us, right? But we also could see a little bit of that vapor right here. So let's talk about what happened. So we had a gas be released and that gas was oxygen and our oxygen got trapped by our liquid dish soap and that's why we see these suds right here so we see that foam so can anyone remind me what phase of matter was our our substances in that hydrogen peroxide and our potassium iodide you remember yeah it was a liquid so then our chemical reaction was able to release a gas. Can anyone remind me? Oh yeah, so a gas. So our chemical reaction helped us go from a liquid to a gas. And that's why we see this process spread up like this. So now to, we would like to also acknowledge and recognize the work and inventions done by Louis Latimer. So Louis Latimer actually invented the carbon filament and this carbon filament is actually just the part of an incandescent light bulb that produces light. And inventions like this, in addition to the work done by Marie M. Daly and Percy Julian, help to make amazing strides in not only African American history, but the work that we do every day in life. So I would like to thank you guys for coming to see our demonstration and thank our virtual audience for tuning in. And if you guys liked what we did here today, then we invite you to join us here at NYSAC and maybe we get to design, make, and play together. So at that, that is now the end of my demonstration and have a great day, guys. Bye.